The process of me getting traded was crazy because one, I never got traded before. I didn't know what to expect. My agent at the time, he was able to get the trade with Boston. And I was excited to play for Boston, honestly. Later on that night, my dad called me. He was just like, would you ever want to play for me? And I was like, honestly, I was like, no. <laughs> When I was younger, I played in the little YMCA league, and it really wasn't, you know, that much of a challenge. It was more just me playing with my friends. One day, my father came home, and he was just like, hey, there's this thing called AAU you should check out. And at the time, I didn't want to do it because none of my friends played in it. But he showed me, like, clips of this team in the, in the local area, and they were, like, one of the best AAU teams, I guess, like, in the country. So I just started to play with them, and that's where, like, my passion really started to evolve for the game as I took it more seriously. People were, were hard on me growing up anyways because who my dad was. I don't remember too much of his career. I was too young, but I just remember the tiny shorts he wore. He wore those small shorts when he played for the Hawks. When I got named McDonald's and Nate Smith Player of the Year, it was more, all right, like, what's next? I chose Duke just because I thought it was the biggest stage uh, in college basketball. Everybody wants to beat Duke and playing for someone like Coach K, who's really, you know, arguably the best coach of, of, in basketball. I couldn't pass that up. Look, look at all the things that he's accomplished. He could easily settle and, and feel comfortable. He was always pushing to get better. I think Duke was the right stomping ground for me to prepare for the league, but I mean, to be honest, everybody adjusts differently. You know, for me, I come to the league, I thought I was like, man, I was going to come in and do this, do that, you know win this and lead my team this way, and it didn't go that way. My rookie year was tough. I, I missed a lot of games, I was hurt. Even before the season, when I started playing, I still wasn't healthy. Mentally, I wasn't confident because then I wasn't playing well. The Orleans was a really tough, dark time for me because I, I never felt like I got to be myself. But I honestly think that the times I failed in New Orleans really have made me the player that I am now. Uh, I'm so much stronger, confident, uh, like swag is, is, is you know, Confidence is all back on a 100%. And I now approach the game the way I did in, at Duke or when I was in high school. It just feels like I'm getting better and better and better. I'm on my way. I just got to keep working. The first practice in L.A. was awkward just because I can only imagine me playing somewhere and someone's coach's son comes in. You're going to be like, can we trust him? Can we, can we talk around him? Is he going to tell his father things we say in the locker room? It, it, you know, like a snitch, or it, it, is he gonna get be given minutes? It's crazy. They'll be in here like, man, yo, Doc, you know, Doc, don't, he don't know what he's doing, man. Da, 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 da. Like right next to me, because they know, like, no matter what, good or bad, I'm always trying to be honest. Guys will say stuff around me, like as if I'm not even related to him no more. They know that they could trust me. The first game I played with LA. It was awful. It was probably my worst NBA game I've ever had. And that's when my pet, my mom and uh, my brothers were like, I told you this ain't gonna work. I, I remember after the game, I just told them, relax. Like, just relax. It's gonna work. And then 20 games later, there was no more question. Me and his relationship is a lot different than what people think it is. You know, growing up, he was always in Boston. You know, for the most part of my life, he was in Boston and I was in Orlando. So we were far apart from each other. So I didn't really get to see him that much growing up like people usually get to do with their father. This is the most we've actually ever hung out, is now. And it's different now because we work with each other, so we keep it professional. We don't have to have that father-son relationship. We have that business basketball relationship, but it's cool because it, it works for us. Mostly on teams, it's like, it's not clicks, but there, there's guys that tend to hang out with guys more than others. and. I, I'm kind of like the middleman. I think over the year, me and CP have gotten a lot closer. I think Chris Paul has that LeBron syndrome. I think people get so used to his greatness that they forget what he does every night. It's like, obviously Stephen Curry, the way he's playing right now, Stephen Curry's gotta be the MVP. But you know, people are like, oh, LeBron's not, you know, LeBron's, you know, whatever, whatever. I think people do the same thing with Chris. I still think Chris is the best point guard in the NBA. He does it on both ends every game. So that's why I think he's the best, and my mind will never change off that. We play in LA, you know what I mean? It's like media capital besides New York. 
anytime you talk about champions, you talk about the Kings, you talk about the Lakers. Nobody talks about the Clippers. So finally, we have a team that we feel like we can win. Like that's, of course, that's all we think of. Our fan base is growing. I mean, we sell out just about every game now. We're trying to bring something to them that they haven't had before, and that's a championship. In our minds, we feel like we can win. So if we don't win, that's a failure.